All right, all right, and we are live. And before I show my rather tired face here, I just wanted to take a short opportunity to say thank you to my Patreon community. All these people right here in front of you is absolutely amazing, and thank you so much for your support. And uh, yeah, one of these guys actually sitting right here in the midst is Whiskey Shared, which is my guest special guest tonight. So I hope you guys will enjoy this blind tasting. We'll talk a lot more about what we're we're drinking and obviously hopefully you guys will be able to guess along with us and uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll take it as it comes. I haven't done any of these for a while. Um, for any of you guys who joined me and New Dram Drinker and Greg from Greg's Whiskey Guide last week, over on Greg's channel uh, would have would have seen me a little bit rusty here. So so yeah. Anyway, let's bring on the legend that is Mr. Toby, aka Whiskey Shared. Boom! There he is. <laughs> What's going on, my friend? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good, uh, Johnny. Welcome to the madness of Spears People Live <laughs> with the slightly delusional Johnny Michelson behind the wheel. <laughs> all right so uh there's a few uh familiar faces here in the comments i don't know if you've had a chance to check in here we got oh what's happening here luna is here awesome and we have rolf is here abhead this is amazing jimmy jazz is here what's going on jim uh greg is here as well whiskey shared Ooh, hello <laughs> <laughs> All right. I hope you guys are having a drink on this wonderful Tuesday night. Um, we have, at a bare minimum, we have two blind samples. We actually have a lot more, so we'll kind of we'll take it as it comes. And and uh, Toby and I were just talking here before that. I sent three samples, and depended on how we get on with the first sample that Toby has shared with me, I'll tell him which to open and see how um, how frisky I, I feel, basically. <laughs> how challenging we, we wanna we wanna get. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for joining, guys. Oh, Whiskey Jason is here, what's going on? Jess is here as well, what's going on, Jess? All right, so just to kind of set the stage, uh, I have one of these, and uh, this is what we'll be kicking off with. Blind sample A. Hopefully I've, I've remember which was in a and i'm sniffing the same one <laughs> so not to be confused with blind sample b yeah <laughs> uh, there's actually there's not that much of a color difference if any i think b is the slightest ever so slightest paler but they're pretty much the same kind of medium gold color so and so yeah we'll see how we get on um do, you, do we want to talk about why we've chosen these samples? Okay. We can. Yeah, yeah, why what, not? What do, you, what do you think? Let's roll with it. So the, I'll, I'll talk about sample A first in case right. we never get to sample B. But I chose them both because they're very different from what you'd normally drink or nose. Um You've already told me that sample A smells a bit different. So <laughs> yep. ho hopefully, yeah, hopefully it's completely different to anything you've ever nosed before. And whether or not that carries through on the palate, as I said, they're probably not the most amazing whiskies, but they are quite different in the way they'll nose and taste. So right. Hopefully um, you can pick out some interesting flavors. It's definitely different. I mean, to begin with, so I've poured these just, just for the record. These have been sitting here for about 20 minutes now. So they have had a chance to just wake up a little bit, I guess, from, from coming out of the, the little little birth canal here. Um, but yeah, the, the, first <laughs> the first kind of, I don't know, assessment of, of nosing it is like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> It that was my initial assessment. That much. <laughs> but no, I think it's weird. I it it reminded me of of um, I don't know. It was 
man, it's still weird. It's like very like medicinal, but not medicinal in, in a sense that you would get from other medicinal type spirits or medicinal in, in the kind of sometimes an Isla whiskey would have that kind of medicinal aspect. This is more, I don't know, like, like children's cough drops type medicinal, like it has a medicinal aspect, but it's like a very sweet, uh, strange <laughs> medicinal aspect, which I'm not able to place at all. It's almost like there's a, there's like a lavender maybe, I don't know. Yeah, there's de definitely something herbal in there. Yeah, herbal, and then at the same time, almost like a um, floral, like a g gasoline <laughs> type note, <laughs> without it being I gasoline. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have picked that up unless you'd said it's. Um, yeah, there, there is a, like a, a chemical smell to it. Chemical, yeah, I think is is a good term because it's not it's not exactly gasoline, but it's the only thing I could come up with. I think chemical is a good way of. <laughs> I don't know what to make of this, man. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> Hopefully, when you do find out what it is, you'll immediately identify that smell. Hopefully, maybe. Yeah, it is kind of. It's kind of a young grainy note is, is I think if, if I'm putting like a little bit of a serious hat on, which I do have a serious hat on here, this this one right here, the the Vinfluencer, um, it does have that kind of young grain note to it, to it and it's a little bit ginger-like. So I wonder whether or not this is actually a, a rye grain, which is that <laughs> kind of ginger note I, I keep on bashing on about when I drink rye whiskeys like gingerbread and stuff like that. But this is a very different version of that, like a very, very young grain. Do you, do you want me to give you any pointers if, if you get things right or wrong? By all means, let's, let's, yeah. uh, okay, let's so there, keep there it, is, keep there, it there's light. Definitely the, you're, you're picking up the grain is spot on. There's definitely grain whiskey in there, but I don't believe there's any rye. Okay. People are asking here if Chris is dressed. So we have uh, an honorable guest here in the chat, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lathrop, who is uh, known for his, uh, I don't know, PG-13 videos. Yeah, topless videos. Maybe it's more than 13. It's it's probably PG something, <laughs> middle age. PG middle age, is that a thing? <laughs> I mean, it kind of, it does open up. I think the more I kind of knows it, that that gasoline, that kind of chemical note, it kind of becomes a little bit sweet. It kind of turns a little bit towards vanilla. Yeah, there's definitely, uh, there's definitely sweet on the nose. And I think it's a little bit like, uh, like an 80s bubble gum or something. Like a little bit, a little bit artificial sweetness. Like the vanilla is kind of like a, like a lighter touch but yeah it has i think it comes back to that chemical chemical note like it, it has that artificial twang to it but i think now i'm starting to get that like <laughs> i don't know how, how old people are I, i'm i'm definitely from the 80s so you get these giant bubble gums that will lose their flavor in like a second after putting it in your mouth and it's <laughs> it kind of feels like that initial burst of, of sweetness there yeah so do you want to do you want to try it on the palate and see let's if do that it. let's do it if that changes people are guessing, um, yeah people are guessing on here so greg is saying blended whiskey i wouldn't rule out that i think it's it's i wouldn't say yeah that we're we're in single malt land here i think it's definitely something that's either a grain or, or a blend Luna is actually pointing out that young grain can have a strange smell. So I haven't actually had that many grain whiskeys, so I'm I'm not I'm not really sure about that, but it makes sense.
40 percent <laughs> chris is saying irish i don't know i don't think it's it doesn't have a typical irish profile to me but i wouldn't say it, it's not irish because I, I don't know what it is at all <laughs> I think it's low. I think it's low proof. I, th I would say forty percent, just based on the initial swirl. Yeah, you're spot on with that. Forty. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrate. Be like a school I'll take a well. small win because everything else is going to be wrong from here on. <laughs> Greg is saying Peaky Blinders. I have not tried that. No, I haven't either. Finished Irish. Finishing. Okay. Let's see if there's any finishing in here. I'm not getting any sherry cask. There's no raisins. There's no kind of dates or fortified wine notes. The vanilla could be like a bourbon cask potentially or I wouldn't say virgin oak because it doesn't have a strong profile. So maybe like ex bourbon, maybe even a second fill. Okay. Do you want me to give you any tips? Yeah, let's let's start to like because okay. I'll just so I'll just it's, keep it's changing my bourbon. mind. Let's, uh, let's guide the conversation. <laughs> yeah, it's been in bourbon and it has been finished in something. It's been in bourbon and it has been finished in something. And something okay. else, yeah. Interesting. Jim is saying more stout. I don't think stout. There's not really any multi notes whatsoever. I think the grain is, is kind of like a young grain. Man. The only thing I can think of here is a wine cask, maybe a white wine cask, because I don't really get any any aspects except for maybe some of that like green grapes. Do you find it quite bitter on the finish? Let's have a look see. Yeah. Once the sweetness disappears, it goes quite bitter. There's very dry wood note to it as well. That's very true. Yeah, it's quite, it's like a black tea where the tea bag has been in for too long. Yeah, and the wood is quite, yeah, it's almost like it's a tannic, a tannic aftertaste. Yeah, I think um, I think people in the chat are getting the um, gist of what this whiskey might be. Oh shit! <laughs> trying to, I'm trying to keep up with the with the chat, but no cheating. <laughs> hmm. Proper twelve. No, no, definitely not that. I've never had that, so I, I wouldn't know. No, I, haven't, I haven't either, but I've I've heard how bad it is. A finished Irish. Let's see here. No. I have no clue, man. This is this is very strange. I feel like it's yeah, it, it feels unpure. <laughs> Let's say it that way. The work of the devil, yeah. A work of the devil, like the devil's cask. Um, it, yeah, it feels a little bit. So I'll say say what I what I think it is without, without saying any brands. Like just a, a very young blend potentially, or pure grain. But then the, the strange thing that that throws me off is the amount of like 
wood and bitterness on on the finish although the finish is quite short so i will i'll i'll take that as this is quite young and also it's not super flavorful it's it's very subtle on the palate there's very few notes coming through the 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 finish is actually the thing that comes through the most and it's just kind of bitter mm. what does that mean I've no idea. French oak. <laughs> what do we say? Any 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 guesses? Teeling single pot. I don't know. I'm 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 out. I'm tapping okay. out. <laughs> so so do you want me to re reveal what let's, it is? Let's, let's do a reveal unless anyone in the chat wants to to give a final guess here. What? Pasta whiskey. There's, there's um there's one there's one correct correct guess. There is. There is one correct. Yeah, there's one correct guess without actually fully naming it. <laughs> they, <laughs> they gave enough information that they know what it is. A. Jameson? <laughs> it, it is A. Jameson, but they it gave is? it, but somebody actually specifically said which one it was oh. without actually naming it. Oh, shit. All right, let's, let's see it. Do we have the bottle? Yep. All right, let's see it. Cask mates. Yeah, it's finished in four pure beer barrels. So what, what? you can taste is hops. There's that hops. hoppy note. Hops. Yeah, it's really it's really noticeable, isn't it? Now you know it's hops. Yes. It's that sort of floral, <laughs> floral sort of note. That that's sense. Really quite quite strong. Yeah, that makes total sense. Interesting. But yeah, it was, yeah. It was I, Greg, I, don't, I don't. Greg was yeah, correct. I don't drink beer, so it's it's yeah, it's it's part of that. I'm a little bit blindsided, except for stout. Right. I'll drink. I'll drink. Have, you ever, been, have you ever been to a brewery? Not that I can remember. Right. So obviously, when they when they um, add the hops to the beer, you get that really noticeable smell, which. Um, you don't necessarily it's much stronger than you get on the beer itself and um that's what this reminds me of it's hops it it makes sense yeah it's like a yeah it makes total sense <laughs> here's a note on that note some someone is not too excited now sorry sorry jason <laughs> damn yeah no no wonder I'm, I was completely thrown off by that, but yeah, as soon as you said it, it just makes sense. It's funny because I've got the um, Castmates IPA edition, where that's mm. finished in IPA barrels for about um, six to twelve weeks. Yeah, and that I find doesn't actually give the sort of flavour that you'd expect from a beer, whereas this immediately, because you know it's beer. It ticks all those boxes. It, you know, it, it it sort of triggers those senses where you think this is what a beer finished whiskey should should smell and taste like. Mm. But obviously, it's triple distilled. It's a blended whiskey. It's very thin on the palate. It is very yeah. thin. The nose, actually, I, I'll say the nose in the very beginning was a bit off-putting, but after a while, it's actually quite pleasant on the nose. Yeah, I, I, I do actually like it on the nose. Yeah, the nose is, is growing a lot. I think that the, yeah, the challenging bit is the palate, because I think it's, yeah, the, the triple, triple distillation here is kind of taken away a lot. I think there's very, very little flavor on it to, to, to I mean, that's obviously my opinion. Anyway, I completely forgot to tell you which which one we should uh, oh, carry on with. Let's uh, hmm. let's do let's do A. Let's okay. uh, let's do the first one. You sure this right, is cool. um, alcohol you sent me? <laughs> yes. So those are previous previously used sex toys that I give away as whiskey samples. <laughs> Are these ones that Chris has used previously? Yeah, they, they are recycled. <laughs> mm. 
This is from the last, the last dropping. <laughs> All right, guys. <clears throat> Greg is saying not a bitter taste fan. I think bitterness has its place. I think it's usually followed by something else or, or kind of balances out with something else. But when it's just bitterness on its own, it, it kind of, yeah, it kind of ruins it a little bit for me as well. All right, all right, all right. Luna is also tipping. Yeah, gin tonic. Actually, this is a this is an interesting point. This I could not place until just now. I think the tonic note is what I was also getting in 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 on the nose initially. It has that kind of weird thing that tonic has, and I I don't have a word for it. Anyway, thanks for that, Luna. Things are. Oh, I need to pour this as well. All right, people are popping in here. Whiskey Quest is here. What's going on, man? We also have Jim, Whiskey Novice. What's going on, buddy? First blind sample is down. On to the second one. So this is a quite recent bottle in my collection. Well, I'd immediately say it's um, <clears throat> American. Would you now? Yeah, or North American. It has those sort of brown sugar sort of sweetness that you get from a bourbon. It's that sort of, it's immediately, that's the sort of, you know, that sort of virgin oak sort of smell. Mine's a bit cold. I'm going to warm it up. Oh, yeah. There's not too much alcohol vapor. But oh, I don't really? think it, yeah, but I don't think it's low ABV. It's it's not attacking my nostrils. Yeah. I, 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 I get what you mean. Yeah, it's not aggressive. Yeah, there's those sort of like really rich sort of brown sugars on the nose. Strong sort of vanilla. It has a strange woody note on the nose for me. Yeah, there's almost a sourness to it, but it's not strong. It it smells a bit like damp wood. Yeah, which over a little bit of time, I think, will translate into marzipan. <clears throat> which is weird in its own, <laughs> in its own right. <laughs> Multi mission is in here. People popping in to say hi. We're on the second. When the second blind sample here, the first was a Jameson castmate bottling, which was very odd on the nose. And there was no chance of me guessing anything. So I made a fool of myself, which is what I'm here for. <laughs> Oh. It for me, it's like it, it just changes between like different aspects of sugary goods, like cake, cake and yeah. like little confectionery, like marzipan, like different variations of that. Like it's kind of like, yeah, there's definitely a hint of sort of cherry bakewells in there. So it's it's not a strong sort of almond, but it's quite sweet. Yeah. But I also get a hint of like cough sweets, you know, like um, um, cough candies, that sort of slightly sort of sugary medicinal sweets. Yep. Yeah. 
Let's see if anyone in the in the chat here is uh, brave enough to throw in some some input at this point, besides North American. <laughs> is it not North American then? <clears throat> oh, we not we not going that detailed until we've tasted it. Let's let's hang on until we've we've hit the palate, and then we can. Okay. Uh, then I'll start revealing little bits. So I'm not sure exactly what this word is, quinine, quinine. <laughs> The depressing bit of gin and tonic. Gin was a depressing drink. <laughs> Jim is lecturing us right now. This is great. I'm not sure it's a depressing drink, but I could see because it has a weird kind of astringent characteristic. Very interesting. Yeah, I'm getting right. powdered sugar now. Powdered sugar? Yeah. And that sort of damp wood has now turned into quite noticeable sort of charred wood. Mm. It's not as damp now. It's dried out. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely, it's, it's opening up. I think it's it's definitely evolving in the glass. Do you want to taste it? Nah. Nah, <laughs> fuck it. All right, guys. This live yeah. is canceled. Toby says, nah. <laughs> Sad right. enough. Let's do it. This is hard to guess. That that's completely different on the palate. Yeah. It's almost like it's fifty percent bourbon and fifty percent something else. It's it's almost like there's a, you know blend going on. There's there's something in there that I can't describe. And similar to what you said for the first dram that we had, I'll, I'll say like once once I tell you, this may or may not actually make sense, but it will make sense to to people who are like more more maybe into this category of things. Right. <clears throat> but yeah, there's there's something special about this one. Luna is asking for more notes. She wants she wants to be the first to guess. <laughs> so what do you get it? What are you picking up on the palette that's so different? It's it's difficult to, to describe. It's almost like it's almost like a It's almost like a smoke character to it, but not like peated smoke or anything like that. Almost like, I don't know, you know when you, it's difficult, when you breathe in smoke, mm -hmm. I'm almost getting that in, in my mouth as I'm, you know, once I've swallowed it and it starts to evaporate, mm. it's almost like I breathed in smoke, but... Yeah, I think there's a really? very yeah. I think there's, there's a, a very heavy but I can't char. Think what it is. I think there's a very heavy char, and there's also a little bit of asphalt, like almost like a tarmac sensation, like burnt rubber. Oh, it, it's very similar to um, you know that 
Yeah, you said you said tarmac when you know on a hot day when the tarmac starts to um, get wet from the rain, and then mm -hmm. you get that smell. It's almost yep. like a toned down version of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can I can get behind that. Yeah, for me it's almost like a it's it's quite ashy, but yeah, also like a burnt yeah. rubber type sensation. But I think it comes down to like a very heavy char. But obviously, on a scale of one to ten, it's really quite light, but it's present. It's you know, it's 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 not like this is dominating. It, it's there, but it's it's not massively uh, massively strong. So I'll pull up some some incorrect guesses here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Luna, this is not from Texas, which also outrules balconies. And brimstone. <clears throat> what do you think the what do you think the grain is? I, I think there's some rye in the mash bill. I wouldn't say it is. there is like um, a spiciness on the finish. Mm -hmm. There's a, almost like a, a um, there's like a, a a peppery sort of flavor. Plus, there's you know that the way a rye sort of attacks your your tongue is different to uh, a malted whiskey. It's just you know it's that sort of character, but you don't have to have a high percentage of rye to get that sort of flavor. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a rye, but it's definitely some rye in there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there there's might not be, but... There's definitely rye in there. Right, okay. So let's let's also outrule some other things here. There's another incorrect statement or guess. It's not a single malt. See, Menno's... It's also, it's also not a Hudson. It's not no. from New York. <laughs> I've got Hudson. Yeah. And that is also not a four grain Hudson. <laughs> it it doesn't seem like a like it's that high ABV. It is quite well balanced, actually. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't have said this is above fifty. It is above 50. It is. Yeah, 53.6. Yeah. They'll all, be, they'll all be on Google now, typing in 53.6%. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, for, for, that, for that ABV, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't have the punch that you'd expect. It's um, very pleasant. It is pleasant for 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 that ABV. I think it's it's well integrated, like the alcohol is well integrated. And another incorrect guess here: Woodford Reserve is not a Woodford. So, um, are we um, agreeing that it's North American? We can agree. Yes, it is North American. Okay. So far, so good. And there is some rye in it as well. Yeah. That's also correct. Okay. So are we north of the border. Are we into Canada? Nope. Okay. You're in the States. How old do you think it is? And I think because of the um that sort of oak character, I would have said it's probably at least eight to twelve years old. I don't think he's young. He's just about four. Really? <laughs> yeah. Four years old.
I think a lot of a lot of the things that and this is difficult. I, I would never be able to pick this up, like honestly, in the blind tasting, but I, because I know what it is, I think a lot of the things that makes you think about maturation and and age is because of the process that has gone through, like the fermentation and, and distillation process that has gone through, like the way it's it's made, which also can disguise what the category is. So is it from a major brand? No. Okay. It's not. So that's going to make it a lot harder. Yeah, I'm, I, I wouldn't expect you to 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 guess like exactly, but it's 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 just fun to hear how you how you're processing this because yeah, it's just really difficult. <laughs> Greg here with another guess. Templeton Rye, four year old, is also. Unfortunately, not correct. <laughs> I think Greg but, is trying uh, to win a prize. He's, he's closing in. You're closing in, Greg. You're 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 closing in. So it is a rye whiskey. But I'm guessing it's not a straight rye. It is a straight rye. Is it? <laughs> yeah. it doesn't seem doesn't seem like there's um, enough rye in there. It's very soft for for a straight rye. That's not a bad so, thing, but it doesn't have that sort of really spicy kick that you'd, you'd expect. Yeah. And this is because of the mash. So this is a sweet right. mash instead of a sour mash. So what's the, what's a sweet mash? I've not heard of that term. So a sweet mash is basically you, you, you create everything from scratch. You don't bring over a starter from a previous batch. Right. You make everything from scratch. Okay. So this is a lot more work, obviously, for the distillery. So this distillery is kind of known for for doing everything kind of similar to um, to to someone like Bimber that like we know here in London is like, well, someone who does everything the proper way, like the way it's like to, to really make quality stuff. And these guys in the US has has been known for that. And uh, I guess we can. Uh, do you want to see? Yeah, why not? All right, let's do this. So, uh, Peerless Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey. So, 53.6. It says three years old. It's actually four years old, but these are the labels. So, this is a barrel pick from the British Bourbon Society that came out uh, not too long ago. I think just around Christmas or something like that. So, yeah, I haven't actually had too much of it. Well, only half. <laughs> it's quite impressive. So I don't think I would be able to guess this was a rye whiskey at all. And and just, <clears throat> just you picking up the rye and the spices, uh, I think we're impressive. I'm impressed. I, I, do, I do like rye. <laughs> I've shared a few, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, and, and I've got and I've got several that you've probably had anyway, but rye is good. Yeah, I, I, I do love a rye. Few people saying they have never, never heard of it, haven't tried it. Yeah, Nichols and Perks, they, they, um, they. Yeah, uh, Nichols and Perks, I think has they, a uh, has a barrel yeah. pick as well. Yeah, which is which yeah. is excellent. I almost bought that. I was tempted. I'll I'll sure. be. I'll be completely honest. As much as I love uh, the British Bourbon Society, I think the Nichols and Perks one is better. I think it's worth, I and mean, it's expensive for a very young whiskey, but yeah, is, yeah. like, as you said, like I would have probably also placed this at around 12, 12 years old. I think there's, there's a lot of quality work gone into this. Um, That's also yeah, quite a special bottle. It's around four years as well. Yeah, I've, I've not seen a bottle like that before. It's um, it's quite unique with almost like a double bottom. Mm. Yeah, it's crazy. They're all like handmade and the, the stopper here is, this is like some kind of metal is, I mean, obviously you can't, oh, this is heavy. <laughs> just, just here, take that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's all like properly done. And uh, yeah, a lot of praise. These guys get a lot of praise. And uh, for most of it, I'll, I'll say it's, it's, it's true, but for some, I mean, for most people paying, this is probably like a hundred pounds 
or 100 US, uh, if you can get any of this stuff in the US as well, like for a three to four year old whiskey is a lot of money. So it is for people that have collections and, and want to expand and or just want to support the brand, whatever. So were you familiar with Peerless um, before you bought that bottle? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've had a few of them before. Um, they can be hard to, I mean, you can't, I don't think you could get them over here until the BBS and Nichols and Perks. Uh, yeah, got. I've not heard of them until Nichols and Perks. Yeah, they've been around for for a little while, not not yeah. too long. I think they've they've only been releasing stuff for a year or two. I think so. so yeah, no, it's really good. Um, if anyone wants, to, uh, we can we can raffle off a sample at some point. Uh, I don't have any thing to raffle off here, but uh, yeah, drop it in the comments in in the video here if you want to be considered for a sample. I'll I'll do a giveaway of this one here so people can try it. Um, I'll figure it out afterwards. That wasn't planned. <laughs> All right, cool, man. Awesome. What do you, what do you think? Do you like it or not? We never yeah, talked yeah, about that. Yeah, that's um, for, for the ABV, I think it's really pleasant. It's the sort of, <laughs> sort of whiskey that doesn't It doesn't sort of justify adding water to it. It doesn't make you think I've got to sip this really slowly because you know it's a bit too, bit too strong. And that rye is not overly spicy. But I think if I bought that, knowing you know what I like about rye, I might be a little bit disappointed. But the fact that I've got to try that, knowing nothing about it, mm. makes you enjoy it more. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, because you don't actually know what it is. Yeah. So actually, I'm ple pleasantly surprised, and and um, yeah, I'd, I'd quite happily um, uh, own a bottle of that. It's it's decent stuff. Yeah. yeah, I definitely. Again, it's not cheap. So, I mean, for anyone on a budget, it's not the bottle to go and pick up because you can get good stuff for much cheaper than that. But yeah, I, I think personally, if you're looking for something special, something kind of craft uh, American style of whiskey like this is this is fun to have yeah and i think sometimes you know when once you've tried uh, most of the sort of mainstream brands you have to sort of branch out to get some individuality and, yeah um, you won't get that from the major brands no matter what they release yeah amen just uh using this one right here uh, yeah i got mine today yes it comes with a with a neat little um soft cloth doesn't it to keep it fingerprint fresh yeah mine is mine is really grotty and i've just been like manhandling it here so yeah it gets a little it needs a little cleaning and also these these glasses are quite big so it literally just fits <laughs> on top here <laughs> yeah, see, unlike yours which fit perfectly on any glass boom yes it'll, it'll sit on your pint glass <laughs> <laughs> not quite <laughs> All right, cool. So, do you want to move into? Uh, yeah, do, do, you, do you want to do one of mine or one of yours? It's up to you. What do you? It, it'll be more fun challenging you, I think. I don't know. You you did way better than I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, but I think that's what's more fun is is challenging you. Ah, oh, I see. I see. Make a fool of the hosts. It's one of those. No, days. no, no, no. <laughs> it's using your deciphering skills to see what you can pick out of, of uh, out of the liquid. All right, let's do it. Right, so, I'll go pour it without showing it on camera because I haven't poured it yet. So we're moving on to the second sample here from Mr. Toby himself. If anyone is joined recently and we haven't said hello, I do apologize. Uh, we're we're just kind of. Just kind of making our way through some samples here. So yeah, we've had two samples so far. We have, we'll we'll go as long as as uh, we can keep to. <laughs> <laughs> we have a few samples to go through here. So so yeah, we'll just keep going. And uh, yeah, we'll share our notes and feel free to guess along. So yeah, third blind sample here. Beautiful medium gold color. Let's have a look at the. We didn't do this for the first one actually. 
or the second one. Let's have a look at the viscosity. Uh, I don't think it's got much. Yeah, it's like a medium, medium viscosity suggested. This one here, much, much, and I say that I say this probably way too easy, but I think this is easier to categorize for me. This feels more like a single malt. It has a maltiness to it. Whether or not it is a single malt, will <laughs> it's a bit more normal. This one, doesn't it? It's a bit, yeah. Let's let's say it that way. Like <laughs> compared, to, compared to the first one, which was like absolutely, I don't know, it was like completely out of whack for me. I couldn't place it at all. This one here is like, yeah, this this is there's a familiar note here. So there's there's some sultanas, there's some uh, multi notes. Yeah. <sighs> there's a little bit of it's a little bit of honey. Or like beeswax, maybe both. Yeah, I think there's yeah, both there's yeah, honey in there. Yeah, it feels very light, very fruity, very fresh, kind of summery. Yeah, this feels a little bit more like a like a medium aged. single malt of sort so like a 12 maybe 15 ish just just from the nose it feels <clears throat> i'm gonna go as far as soon as it feels straightforward okay like very uncomplicated it feels like very nice very elegant but not not very characterful as in like it it's is doing everything exactly as it kind of should, as as you would expect it to do. That kind of it's 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 like old faithful. It smells great though. I love it. Yeah, no, I like I do like this one. There's one thing you haven't said on the nose, which I pick up. <sighs> old carpet. <laughs> No, that's not. <laughs> I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing what what I what I think that you you there get. A couple of things. <laughs> I don't get old carpet like it. <laughs> I'll do exclusion method for like half an hour of things that I don't get. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a couple of things I get which you haven't mentioned, but bring it. I I, I do get a hint of smoke on this one. I don't. Okay. But there's, yeah, there's something. There's also there's, another thing I get. There's fresh apples. Do you get any toffee? No, but I get salted caramel. Okay. Maybe there's a little bit of a brininess, but I'm not sure. It's like, yeah, almost like a sea salt. People are saying Deanston, Aberfeldy, Glenfiddich, 18. Oh, they just can't draw the Scotch whiskeys. That's gonna take a while. <laughs> so this is, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to guess like a brand because no. the Scotch is not, um, too wide, too I think. What I would drink, but I think in terms of the profile overall, it feels. I mean, if you say light smoke, it could be a lowlands. I'm just not getting that that smokiness. I'm getting kind of a. Uh, I wouldn't even say coastal either. I think that's also wrong. That's not. That's not what it is. Yeah. See, I I definitely get like um. Like a, a yeasty sort of 
peachy hint on the nose. It's quite light. Okay, I'm going to like aggravate it. I'm getting a little bit more of a multi note, but yeah, no, I still don't get that. I don't get that smokiness. What, what kind of, what, how would you describe the smoke? Just so people it's, in the it's, chat can. It's almost like it's yeasty. It's like a yeasty sort of um, uh, earthy. But it's, it's really light. I find it really light. Richard Patterson's private collection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I got it straight out of his carpet. It was you on the news, the break in. <laughs> I got it straight out of his carpet. Nice. He yeah. throws it all on the carpet, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you just use that fancy Dyson yeah. to get it out. Yeah, that's what this is. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, what, what, whatever smokiness, even, however faint or light, I'm just, I'm not getting it. But the fact that you've said it makes me think it's important. <laughs> now you, you, you're messing with me, man. Uh, no. I, I, don't, I don't think it's important. But that's what I pick up. Whiskey Quests here says Mac Myra or Mac Myra. Swedish whiskey. Swedish whiskey. Hmm. I don't know. I wouldn't know. <sighs> All right. And we'll Antonio, taste it. Probably thinks, Antonio probably thinks it's that because I like a good Mac Mirror whiskey. I think I've only had one. So, and I don't think it's this one. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're going to try I'll it. Taste it. Greg is asking if it's spicy. I don't know. Let's see. Hopefully that you'll get, you'll be able to narrow it down a bit more from the palette of the direction of where we're going with this. It's quite thin on the palette, isn't it? I think I need to go. I need to go for seconds here. <laughs> okay. I think forty. I think forty-three percent. Interesting. It's quite sweet, isn't it? It's yeah, quite sweet. Yeah, it's it's sweet, but it has a has a aromatic kind of aftertaste. So I wonder if there's like a like an Oloroso sherry cask influence of sorts. It's a little bit peppery on the finish, but I think that's. Um, Like a heat pepper rather than a, you know, grain spice. <sighs> Greg is saying, whatever you guys are saying, I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> me too, buddy. Me too. This is a. Do you pick up any um, peat on the uh, palate? No. Or any smoke? No. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I've given you a different whiskey. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about two different things here. <laughs> Peppery multi coastal. The coastal note now is 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 gone. Mm. I don't think there's there's any I don't think it's like an island. 
I don't think it's, it's yeah, like a coastal. There's definitely a sherry influence going on. There's definitely a sherry influence, but I think on the nose it was hard to pick up, but now on the palate, it kind of came through, which which also now is coming through a little bit more on the nose. <sighs> Jesus, sherry influence. Earlier you were talking about its age. And age. Um, you you were pretty in you were in the ballpark. Yeah, 12 to 15, I think. I'll probably go for the lower end of that. I think maybe 12. What do you say? Give yep. give us something, Toby. Give us. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, what? 12? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely 12, yeah. Did anyone guess it in the chat here? I don't know where you're following on. No, I didn't see any 12 in the chat. There's uh, there's Buna here. GS, I don't know what that means. Glen Scotia. Ah. I thought he said Greg's. <laughs> uh, let's see what everyone's... Uh, no one is guessing here. It's. I'm glad I'm not the only one because this, this is... I feel like... The reason for me it's, it's difficult to guess is because it is it is almost whiskey neutral, as in like this could be many different things based on just what I'm tasting here. Because it feels like a again this like when I started drinking Scotch whiskey, this is what I think Scotch whiskey was, like right here. It's like yeah, floral. A little bit malty, a little bit of that honey note, fresh apples. Initially, I was getting that that salty note, but now I'm not. So it's, it's it's interesting because for me, I I probably drink Scotch the most, and this isn't quite like most scotches that I drink. It's it is a little mm. bit different. There is something that makes it a little bit different for me. Okay. It's and it could be because I know what it is, but <laughs> you know, sometimes the, the thought of something is what changes your perception mm. more than the actual flavor itself. The palate is getting more and more fortified wine. Do you nope. get any dustiness on the nose? Any what, sorry? Like dustiness. Dustiness. Yeah. I sometimes pick that up on this. Sometimes it's strong, sometimes it's not. I don't I wouldn't say dusty. I would say there's a woody, there's a woody note which I would I think I'll I'll call it like cigar box out of out of lack of, of better language to determine what that is. It's kind of a dry sensation. It's woody, but it's not like it doesn't come across as like a barrel barrel wood, but it has that kind of dry wood sensation. So maybe that's what you, you mean by dusty. So do you, do you want me to help you narrow it down? Let's let's do it. Okay. <laughs> oh, sandalwood is the guess here. Talisker 12. I don't think it's Talisker. It's not a single malt. It's not a single malt. So, okay. So And it's not it's not a blended malt either. So there's grain in there. It is a, a, a blended Scotch whiskey. Interesting. Yeah, this is where my my lack of, of tasting like a, a lot of grain stuff just kind of I'm not able to pick these things out. This is good though, because I think this now is starting to categorize grain whiskey for me now because I, I i think this kind of when i say like tip atypical scotch almost like bog standard as as the influencer would, would say for me 
that's kind of this is this is what that is and obviously this is just my way of categorizing things in my head so i can i can use it yeah it feels overly fruity now like on the nose and overly fortified winey on the palate it's almost like there's a little bit of a disconnect i don't know if this is just me now People are saying Shivas. Hmm. No, it's not. Black label 12. Let's see what people are saying. I wouldn't be able to guess it. It's definitely not black label. Is it in the Walker family? No. No. There's no million miles away. Hmm. Man, I, I have no idea. Put me out of my misery, man. Okay. Right, so it's 12 year old. It's scotch. It's blended. And it's Thirty-five years old. Ooh, what the fuck? Bells. <laughs> you see, that's what blended whiskey used to taste like. It, it there definitely is um, a difference in character. To mm. obviously, it's completely different to modern bells because modern bells yeah. isn't very finished. But this um, this one is. Um, quite a bit different from you know it's similar diageo counterparts today there's definitely uh um it's it I, th I think it's more simple as a liquid but yet there's still a lot going on yeah i think i think it's great and i think yeah when you, when you say simple and 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 maybe it came across as like a negative for me when when i started talking about it initially but like it's not a negative that it's kind of that middle of the road, like everything, doing everything right kind of thing. Cause that was, that was kind of how it came across. It's like, this is everything that if you're, you're a daily drinker with this, this is like everything that you want a whiskey to be kind of thing, like easygoing, middle of the road, fruity, not high ABV, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's, it's, it's quite easy to drink. Very pleasant nose. I think, yeah, the palate for me is where it kind of, it, it dips a little bit because it did become a little bit malty and, and, and bitter. But that could be the the fact that it's vintage. I don't know. How long have you had it open? Um, about four or five months. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's, it's not been open that long, but I, th I think... Yeah. There's definitely liquids definitely change in the bottle, even when they're sealed. When they're that old, they do seem to get some. Yeah, they can. Input. They can get some air in, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't think it's massively influenced by that. To be honest, I think it's just yeah. But it definitely has a, an interesting character, which is different from today's equivalents. It's not a million miles away. Yeah, but, but it is different enough that you think actually that's actually a snapshot in time it isn't you know exactly what we have today yeah yeah. and what's the is, is that like a it's a diageo brand okay and is it like a bottom shelf brand today or is it like a mid-shelf yeah, yeah. uh... yeah. they only have pretty much bottom shelf okay sort of. they use most of their production in diageo's blends okay so you know, at that time, it was probably going into a Johnny Walker as well. Right. Man. Thanks for sharing that, dude. This is... Right. <laughs> there's there's think, no way. I, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was worth going a little bit sort of off piste. Yeah, man. I think, I think it was um, uh, Neil from the Whiskey Trials that gave me the idea because he bought an 80s a bottle of bells 
and my brother's a, a big blended whiskey fan and and his sort of starter is always bells and um i wasn't expecting it to be sherried when i bought it at auction right. so when i do the side by side comparison obviously they're a million miles apart because one's sherried and one isn't yeah yeah <laughs> so, um, yeah I, I was a bit surprised by that no it's really good yeah i dig it i don't know where that saltiness came from in the beginning like i was getting like sea like sea salt and caramel and stuff but it was just like for a little period of time yeah, I've, I've no idea what whiskies go into this so i don't know what distilleries would have made it up uh in the 80s but it's mm. possible that there is a small percentage of uh you know a, a, a coastal or briny or peated whiskey that goes in that yeah excellent all right let's uh let's do c c yeah so save save the save the b sample for yourself and then uh let's do the c one here okay I think that's, a, so, that's, that's a good one <laughs> if i save if i save b for myself does that mean you want me to blind taste that another time off camera and then tell you what i think it is before you, you tell me what it is we we can do that or we can or we can drink it now because <laughs> i think i think that's always good if you if you can take your own time with a mm. a blind whiskey and sort of you know come up with what you think it is yeah in terms of the flavor profile it means that you aren't influenced and you get a much more natural experience yeah, obviously yeah. It's slightly different when you're doing it on camera because there's time constraints yeah there's pressure yeah that too <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pour the this on the side here. All right, so let's see. All right, let's see. Let's see what this takes us. See, Luna suggested that I make a video of uh, sample B. Guessing what it is. Just do it. Yeah, do it when you're you're on your on your own, all comfortable, camera on, no clothes. Chris style, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can use the sample bottle to cover things up. <laughs> See, I think this one's darker than A was. Definitely darker, yeah. It's a little bit more of a of an amber. I think most most things so far have been like a gold hue. Yeah. See, I think on the nose, it smells like a wine cask finish. It smells quite whiny to me. Smells very dry. Yeah. It is quite dry, yeah, actually. Yeah, there's, it's, it's quite tannic on the nose. Smells very similar to the way Oloroso does in the fact that you get that really dry sort of tannic note on the nose. Yeah, it's definitely aromatic. Yeah, it's quite a bit of alcohol vapor. So it's. <sighs> yep, so burns, my, uh, these... burns my nostrils. <laughs> you said one of these samples isn't whiskey. So is this potentially not whiskey? But it does. I don't know. You tell me, man. I don't know. It comes across as a wine finished whiskey to start with, but that whatever that sort of wine note is, it's really quite overpowering. It's really pungent. And there is a reason for that. Is that because it's not whiskey? Greg is <laughs> old McLaren, which is not true. It it is whiskey. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's just what you said earlier, sort of made me think that maybe you kind of <laughs> catch me out. Well, I sent you three samples. One was a urine sample. So <laughs> yeah. I was going to say you need to see a doctor or drink more if if that's um... yeah, you're dehydrated. You should. 
This is your uh, drink aware sample. Luna is asking if you get oh. a lot of sulfur. Not really. I don't really pick up a sulfur note. There is a there's a a, a maltiness in the background. That's starting to come out now. This is definitely a, a drink that needs to breathe. It's funny you should say that. That's like my 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 thought as you were just saying that. It feels trapped. It feels like it's it hasn't like it opened hasn't up. opened yet. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I'm getting like a maltiness now, which I wasn't before. It doesn't seem overly sweet on the nose, but it's it's sweet enough. It's like that tannic note has died down a little bit. I'm getting lots of raisins. Luna is asking again, any yeasty notes, unbaked dough, anything like that? Yeah, I, I would say there's... Now she mentions it, there is a little bit of sort of yeastiness to it. It's a little bit of grapevine. It, it almost smells... Um, it smells like it's going to be oily. It, it smells, you know, like it's it's overly rich. All right, let's see. We can. I don't know. We can capture. Yeah. Yeah, it's dark, isn't it? It's dark, and the oils are sitting. So yeah, I think. Yeah, the very slow legs to it. Yeah, super slow. It's just kind of like. Yeah. Yes, I would, I would, yeah, viscosity, it would be suggested to be very high. I'd, I'd say, because um, Greg's asking about the ABV, I'd say just from the nose, I'd say that's quite high. I'd say that's in its 50s. Yeah, it's up there. Yeah, it does, it does smell like that, you know, there's plenty of alcohol coming off it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, uh, if you uh, take a big whiff, you'll burn some uh, some nose hair. <laughs> <laughs> I get aniseed as it evaporates. Just put a little bit on my hands. I get mm -hmm. aniseed. I get to. Uh, there's a hint of tobacco in the background as well. Hand rolling tobacco. Yeah, I, I get that. I think your aniseed, I'm getting like almost like an absinthe. Yeah, but I got that when I, I put it on my hands and just let it evaporate, rubbed it in. Yeah. The aniseed was quite noticeable. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm, get, I'm, I'm probably getting absinthe because of that aniseed note, plus the fact that there's a lot of alcohol vapors coming out. Like ethanol, it's literally just like it keeps on, yeah. it keeps on giving. Yeah, you can't you can't keep it at your nose for too long. Nope. <laughs> so, so, so Greg's Greg's um, suggesting that it might not be Scottish. Who knows? But my 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 instant reaction would be that it could be. <laughs> yeah, my reaction my instant reaction would be it could be it fits. It fits the flavour profile of a of a scotch on the nose, you know, heavily um, sort of sherried scotch. Mm. I get lots so, of tobacco now. Lots of tobacco. Mm. But not 
it's more dried tobacco on the palate than sort of fresh hand rolling tobacco that I was picking up on the nose. Mm -hmm. um, it's very tannic. It's quite drying. It's the ABV is definitely um, car strength. I'm sure. Yeah. It's fifty eight point four. But it's not too punchy that you think, you know. I wish I'd taken a smaller sip mm. the first time. It's it's enough, strong enough, but it's it's not overpowering. It's yeah. um, it's the right sort of you know level. Um, it's not too sweet, but there is enough sweetness that it's um, that it's. Uh, that, that sweetness stops it from um, finishing quite dry because the sweetness lingers, but mm -hmm. it's not too sweet. Yeah, I think that's I the viscosity. It's thick. It's like oily. Yeah. Sweet. I, was, I was definitely expecting it to be um, more tannic <laughs> from the sherry. So Greg is... Uh saying it could be the Cavalan sourced, which is, it is not. That would have been a good guess. That would have been a curveball I would love to throw in, but I had already sent the samples at the time, I think. I do, I do really like this one. I think it's got a good, the tobacco's died down now, but there's, enough sweetness the tannic notes aren't too dry the tobacco note isn't too strong and the viscosity is enough that it really sort of coats the mouth it's got really good mouth feel mm. it's quite oily i reckon this this would be quite interesting add a few add in a few drops of water from time to time to sort of see how that changes I'm going to do exactly that. Might have to join you. Boom. <laughs> Part of the Johnny fan club. Dropping the bombs. Yeah, water is, is really good in this one. It can actually, this can take a lot of water and still be amazing, in my opinion. I instantly get more sort of tannic notes. Just out of the water, that it goes a lot drier. I get a hint of toffee now or caramel. No, maybe caramel. <laughs> See, my guess would be it's Scottish. It could definitely pass for a, a Scotch whiskey. There you go. Scotch. I got something right. Yep. High proof, scotch, sherry. What do you think about age? I don't know. I, I don't think... I don't think it's probably more than 10 or 12 years old. I could be completely wrong, but that, that would what, be... What, what makes you say that, though? I think if it's been in a sherry, probably first fill sherry butt, then that's given it a lot of flavour. But I'm not really getting much dryness on the finish. Normally, as, as the Scotch whiskies get older, they start to get quite dry once, once the once the sort of flavor is dissipated mm. and it, you, you then get quite a dry bitter note that's left on the tongue and i'm not getting any of that but if you think about should it be first fill sherry and it has been in there for a long time some of that will add to that viscosity so you'll get a less of a dry 
This is a leading question, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is is quite a bit older than I think it is. <laughs> may have suggested the witness follow a certain protocol <laughs> <laughs> so how much older is it but i mean what what, what so what's Mark. your what's your guess what do you say did you say 12 yeah 12 yeah it's a it's a decade more right okay exactly or exactly more yeah right. 22. And the things that you you've said a lot of things that you could conclude that it's 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 older because of the tenants and the heavy sherry influence and the viscosity and stuff like that. It's not Glen Farkless, is it? No. Okay, because they do a twenty-two-year-old one hundred five. It is an independent. Bottling though of a well known distillery. I do get um, a slight waxiness to it. So for me personally, the sherry on the finish, I can only really enjoy this for a very short period of time. Then I get really annoyed with it. And then I just want to throw it out. But the first glass is always amazing. So it's something I can only ever drink like one, like a tiny little glass like this. And then I, it's too much for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it's quite I intense. It's quite yeah. like... I think it's the sort of dram that you might finish an evening with. Yeah, or if you just want to sit on on a single dram, like all yeah. night, you could easily, because it like one sip and it will just sit on your palate for mm. like 10, 15 minutes without you having to top up. There's, um, there's actually someone who's guessed the distillery in the chat now. <laughs> well, is, the, is it is it Greg or Rolf? <laughs> Neither. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> right. There we go. I've got to go further back then. All right. So, Ooh. let me know um, if you want to see. It's a sherry butt, single barrel, single cask, rather, <laughs> from the single malts of Scotland. Right. It's from it's Ben good. Nevis. Oh. Yeah, I never would have guessed that. No. Looks even darker in that bowl. Yeah, it looks, it looks like it's... The Kraken rum. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the Kraken rum. <laughs> that, that's yeah, impressive. You're right. I put the Kraken rum in this bottle. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's an impressive <laughs> dram. This is great. I bought this. I see what you mean. Though. The more you drink it, the more you drink it, the 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 more it sort of builds on your palate, and you feel like you can't drink much more. Yeah. It's almost, yeah, it almost gets too much. I mean, too yeah. much of a good thing, but yeah, it's, it really is like very, very... That, that means that the bottle lasts longer and it means that, you know, you can pick the time that you want to enjoy it rather than just polishing it off too quickly because it's so Moorish. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's it's good that something's a bit too much of a heavy hitter mm. that you can be a bit more selective with that as a dram. But it's yeah, that sherry influence is massive. It is like it's it's. I mean, it's almost instantly on the nose. It's just raisins all day long for me. Mm. 
I think if you poured a glass of Oloroso sherry next to it and smelt the two, there's, there wouldn't be much difference. It's really strong, isn't it? It's quite... <sighs> yeah, Whiskey Jason got it. Ben Nevis. I think it was Whiskey... Yeah, Whiskey Jason got it. Some good guessing on them. There's some good guessing on this one. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if I can drink the rest of this. Like this will take me a long time to drink. This will last me like a whole like old James Bond movie, like Sean Connery just like really? jamming away, and I'll just have one of these for like an hour and a half. <laughs> I think because it's also got quite a long finish. So because it just it's, yeah because it's quite viscous it sits in your palate for a decent amount of time so mm. you feel like you don't need another sip until that's that's gone yeah so um yeah it's um yeah it's one serious strand yeah this is the and and we talked about this before we hit the live button. This is the one that I thought you potentially could have had this because I bought this bottle off of Jazz. And um, I know that he probably shared it with other people as well in London Whiskey Club. But I don't know. If, I'm if, pretty if, sure I haven't tried that. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Awesome, man. Yeah, that's, that's an great. impressive dram. Yeah, it's yummy. I like it. But again... Just, just for a little while. <laughs> Where is that? Like bells from the eighties. I could drink that all night. Mm. Oh yeah, just even going, just smelling it after smelling this other one. I kind of like. I'll, I'll, I'll drink this any day. That's impressive. I wonder. Have you done it against? Uh, you should do a side by side with like one of the current bottlings if you haven't done that already. Yeah, no, I've done. I've done that on my channel. Yeah. They have their uh, poles apart. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna check out. yeah. Did you do a blind or did you know? No, no, I knew. Yeah. Would you dare do it blind? Oh, they're completely different. You can definitely do that blind. Okay. Because one is sherry and one isn't. So the fact oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they are completely different. It's a shame because I didn't know it was sherry until I opened it and thought, oh my God. You know, it's like all raisins and and sweet and fruit and yeah yeah so you know i thought they would be similar but you know from different eras there are different versions that's the deluxe blend which which is sherry but they did they did um uh different blends that weren't man yeah i'm digging that did you get you got out of uh, auction? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it was um, twenty five pound. Serious? Yeah. Nice. I, ba I, I basically was watching bottles that I wanted on auction. They all went too high, so I looked at all the cheapest bottles that nobody bid bid on, <laughs> and just and just thought, what what's interesting that you know isn't in the shops? Dude, you're like the perfect consumer in the in this day and age. But buy the cheap stuff. I'll buy whatever. Like, yeah. <laughs> just show me what you have. I'll buy something. Yeah. <laughs> You're the reason we all get ads on our phones today, Toby. It's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Cool, man. Awesome. This was great. Love it. Which was your uh, Which was your favorite of tonight? I think. Um... The last one. The last that one. Was, yeah, that was so, so. Well, it's almost like a really powerful dram. It's it's so overpowering of the senses mm. that it, um, yeah, really uh, takes some time to take in how uh, impressive it is. Yeah, I think honestly, mine is the bells. I actually really enjoy it. I think also because it's something where it's like I could just drink that all night. Whereas any of these other ones, I probably, I mean, the last one, I would only have one. The rye, I'd have a few. 
the first one, I would nose it all night. I'm not sure I would drink it. Yeah. <laughs> it smells amazing. Like it really does. But yeah, on the palate, it's just such a different like experience altogether. All right. What's people doing in the chat? Hanging out. I'll raise a glass to you, Toby, my friend. It's been a pleasure having you on, as always. Am I going to see you in the um, in the big smoke for the next uh, tasting? No, I'm not in the next one. Not Can't the make next one. one. No. Are you at the Chichibu one or the Japanese, whatever? No, can't make that one either. Oh, shit. Jesus. All right. Well, I guess we'll just have to make do for uh, seeing your beautiful face here. I'm just, like, drawing a mental picture. <laughs> for the spank bank. <laughs> you go to Chris's channel for that. I know, I know. All right, cool, man. Thanks for hanging out, and thanks to everyone in the chat. It's been an honor having you guess along with us, and hope to see you guys in the next live, whenever that is. I have no idea because my life is crazy. So, uh, so yeah, there's that. Thanks again, guys, and uh, yeah, peace out. Cheers. Have a good night. <laughs>